Well, uh, <clears throat> as we're sitting here at LTV with the Hello Hello Show on uh, December 4th, year 2000, and uh, is it 4th? Yes, it is 4th, yes. December 4th, year 2023, on Wednesday afternoon, here with the Hello Hello Show. My name is Chaim Mizrahi, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980. 81, 82, 83, 84, about four decades of uh, creativity, four decades of straightforwardness as far as the focus, as far as the uh, um, the wonderful aspects of creativity, of uh, access in the hands of the public, interviews, and um, dedication, devotion, you know, all of the uh, that which requires a... Uh, for these kinds of these kind of entities and this kind of shows to uh, continue and to be what they are and to accumulate thousands and thousands of interviews and shows to add to our wonderful uh, uh, library here at LTV. So, just hold on one second. I just wanted to test something here. Okay, that's good. That's pretty good. Here we go. And here. Uh, so, uh, and then, of course, you know, as we're uh, opening uh, year 2023, um, yeah, me personally, if you watch my show and if you know the routine, other than having interviews, you know, the nature of the routines that... Uh, uh, govern and occupy and um, and uh, consist uh, uh, um, of of my shows will be pretty much monologues, uh, pretty much talking about uh, the nature of the artistic process, creativity, what's really kind of residing up there in uh, on top of the uh, right there, <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I w I, w I would like to kind of. Uh, find out what is the significance of uh, of uh, uh, embarking on a, on a new year, and mm -hmm. even though yeah, you know me personally, I don't like to uh, I don't, I don't like to make too much of a big deal about symbols or I mean when I'm in my studio in front of my canvas, I'd like to play head games as much as I can in order to manipulate the moment. Uh, in order to benefit from uh, uh, any potential obstacles that might kind of um, um, wait for me to surprise me. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many obstacles have a mind of their own uh, waiting for you to, um, to test you, to see if you're, um, if you're artistically uh, worthy or compatible. Um, a lot of these aspects that were... Uh, waiting for me, and that I had to, to, to encounter. I, uh, I, I realized one thing, and one thing simply and simple is that you know I don't need most of the obstacles that I happen to encounter, and that I have to find a way and, and work really hard on finding a way to uh, either bypass them, avoid them, trick, bring you know, in, introduce a trick to the reality as an addition. To uh, to uh, confuse the obstacle that has a mind of its own that wants to stand in a way for a known or unknown reason, and also to find out once you can uh, a part of the process, a part of the, the like deep into the uh, process of creativity, uh, you realize that most of the time you don't want to know the answers. You don't want to know the answers of why you're hearing voices and why you feel like there's someone else in the room and there's no one there. You, you know, you, you, you know that it's fiction and you don't want to dwell too much and try to find out what is the meaning of that, of that uh, uh, still nevertheless extra presence that you cannot see but you can feel. And but when you introduce the head games, supposedly, and even in life, you know, just imagine that you're, um, you know, the art of pretending. I, um, I, I mean, I can tell you that, you know, I, I, even with my children, I can, I can tell my eight-year-old, listen, why don't you just pretend that if she says, uh, 
uh, I'm bored or I have a headache or why don't you just but because you know I I want to convince my eight year old that she is so good at pretending you know because that's what the children do they play games and head games they don't even know they're doing that so why don't you just utilize your ability to pretend which happens to be exquisite and imagine that you're not bored and imagine that you don't have this headache of yours and and you'll be amazed how well it works and how efficient it is and how real it is and when when suddenly a kid realizes that you as as a dad and and, and as a mom and uh, introduce them to to a possibility that is kind of uh, uh, freaky, borderline uh, tricky, borderline. And here's my friend there. Uh, you. you know, you're not disturbing me, never ever. I, never I, you, I would fine. love you to sit there and chat with me a little bit. That would be you, like. I can give you a few seconds because I got another guy over it's there. That, okay, that. I'm just going to do this. Here we go. Oh, okay. Ooh. And Ooh. I'm going to do this. Hey, I want to show you one more thing on this. Here we go. Here we go. I want to make it, sure. Look at this. Let me put my glasses. I am, I'm entering the full my frame. Advanced stage, I can see. I can't. I don't even know that you're here. I, well, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> well, well, how'd you see, do? I hit. There's a full frame button. Thank it's this little you. button over there. That's the what I was right looking corner. for. I know. And so let me see. I know you were. Oh, okay, look at you. So look now it's there. Uh, see, now we go back to you again. Now you're now you're perfect. Okay. <laughs> that was shocking, by hey. the way. <laughs> what? That I'm bald? No. <laughs> no. What I do since when you're paying attention to what I'm saying anyway? Oh, come on, <laughs> come on, how are you doing? So, right? wait, where, where are we? Okay, uh, 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 uh yes, <clears throat> I was just talking about in introducing uh, my kids with the option to pretend that they don't have a headache or they're not bored, and because they're so exquisite in being able to pretend when they play their games and all this, Sunday they realize, well. There's something into it. They, 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 the results yield, you know. Oh yeah. There's, it's like it's it's amazing. I mean, you're gonna find out when you're gonna have your own kids. And yeah, um, yeah, pretending that you don't have the problem. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It, yeah, I got you. That's pretty cool. Idea. It, yeah, yeah. And so you know, because I am, you know, I was talking about the early stages of my uh, engagement with the artistic process. Okay. Where I was. Um, um, yeah, you know, obstacles have a mind of their own, and they want to present themselves to you. Yeah. And and with the, with the, so I I didn't never bother to understand what is the reason. I just bothered bothered to understand how am I bypassing them and ignoring them and making sure that I, I yeah. you know that 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 I cannot be their target because I'm nowhere to be found. That's fair. I my problem is I get focused on the reasoning behind the obstacle a little bit too much. Um, you know. I mean, I, I fall into that pit a lot. Um, the idea of just moving past the obstacle is probably a better one. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting point. It's an interesting point. So, I mean, the, I always wonder about where do you, where do you draw your uh, inspiration to be inspired, you know? Because what, what, you, 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 the way you move, the way you operate, is, uh, it's pretty forceful. It's pretty... Uh, and and I, I I can tell about people where this ability comes from with you. I I, I cannot pinpoint it. Neither can, I. <laughs> Neither can I. Thank you for the answer. No, that was a I, very I, um, meaningful answer. Sometimes if I'm uh, overtired or overworked, I have some great points of inspiration. Some of my favorite ideas that I've had come from there. Um, often though, when it comes, I I I have one idea recently that I'm, I'm working on with a friend of mine. Um, because I know that we can do it within our limited budget um, and do it well. And I, I think I'm very insecure about not being able to do what I consider my best work because of the fact that uh, there's an aspect to me which is just like... Um, I released a, a film years ago. I had a, a, had a short film, and I thought it was really cool, and I, and I enjoyed it. And some... There were some problems. I had some problems with my camera. My camera was a little malfunctioning, but it overall worked. Yeah. And I just got, like, you know, a lot of people calling. It was weird. There was a few people who would call me up and just, like, be really judgmental about it. And it kind of hurt because I spent, like, five years working on it. And it made me feel like I wasted everything. And I kind of just got a little bit resolved, and I was like, that shouldn't happen again. 
And consequently, though, I mean, the other problem is with that is is that I lost my momentum. I lost any forward momentum. That was like 10 years ago I did that, and I lost the sense of like actually just putting things forward and just accepting the fact that the things aren't perfect, that life isn't perfect, that your ideas aren't perfect. I labeled most of those that made me feel the way that made you feel as troublemakers, you know. That, that's and it. they are. And, and looking back on it, they, <coughs> and accept it as such, and, yeah. and you will be, you'll free your immediate zone from... Uh, there, there was someone who came to me and said, how long did it take you to do this painting, for example? And I said, I don't know, you know. But this one was really stubborn and kept on asking me, no, really, how long did it take you? So I said, 100 hours. Yeah. And then he looked at me and he says, I have a feeling you're not the painter. That's what he told me. And I looked at him and I said, I have a feeling that you're a troublemaker and you have no reason to be here right now. So I really would appreciate it if you leave. So I'm saying that to someone that I would, I, I, I cannot even imagine. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't even, even imagine that I would find myself in a scenario where I talk to someone that comes to my show like this. Yeah. So, so but, 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 the, but the way it was like I said, oh, oh, troublemaker, oh. Yeah. Like this, I, read. I was kind of surprised in front of him verbally, live. Yeah. And... And I saw him many times since then, here and there. And believe me, he avoided me. And that was a good thing for me. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. I mean, yeah. but it's just, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because it's also like, you, you know, it, the, the tougher aspects of it are, um, if you it, want anyone to critic your work, they must be worthy of it. Well, not even that. Don't you think? But also to put, I mean, you know, with someone other, you can respect. You say, well, you know, if you say that, maybe there's something to it. But also, maybe there is. You know, I mean, but sometimes, sometimes people are going to have something, and you know, if it hurts, maybe there's something to the pain that means I haven't worked on it myself enough yet. A weakness that I was trying to hide. It has nothing to do with the creative process itself. Like, no, maybe a bit there too. Like, you know what? After I, I, I had one person say that, about that, about my camera and all that stuff, I had another guy say just terrible things about my work, just really, really crappy. And uh, it hurt. Hurt a lot. Um, but I had a, a great motivator of vengeance at the end of it. Oh boy, well that that will you know, uh, uh, But about us so apropos and I'm not changing the subject, apropos L T V, do you realize that you're actually working in a public access entity and or is it just a job for you? I mean what is it? Is it really compassion and, and passion that adds to the immediate value of a, your engagement with this and by the way you're getting paid for it? Or is it I'm getting paid for it, it's a job period, that's all there is to it? Depends on which job that I'm doing. So I have the job here at LTV where I'll, all I am is the, where I'm the video engineer, where I take care of whatever the shows are. Um, and that to me does feel like a lot like, you know, hey, I got to do this, got to get it done, I got to be professional. Um, but when it comes to the government access stuff, the public, the, the, the government stuff, that I do feel the weight of, that, of, of a greater responsibility because it's making sure that the people have access to their government. And that's a thing that we forget often. That it's not the government, it's your government. Um, that's a problem, in my opinion. Um, and by increasing public access, you know, I mean, like, you know, one of the great things about, like, the phone line and the hybrid meetings that we've done is that it's taken away an excuse. You know, it's like, not only has it made sure that if you're disabled, your car doesn't work, we've got a path for you. That's a great thing right there. Yeah, of so, course. But then there's another thing, which is that, you know what? If you have a problem with your local government, you should say it to them. Why don't you, why, why don't you say it? And that, that's, that's a big one. I think that's a big one. Um, because, you, you know, there were before, there, there were times where the, we would see the same group of people always showing up at the public meeting. After the public call-in line, guess what? We have a whole different crew now whole different group of people call in from all over and the town board then can actually work with this you know our town board is really receptive we have a lot of good people there on it and i yeah. and, we, and i feel the way actually about a, a lot of our a lot of our elected boards and appointed boards and what i think happened was is that 
there's a few things here. It was a stigma towards entering a government building. Maybe you don't feel comfortable entering a government building. I don't know why, but it's fair, you know? And it's a, yeah. it's a fair feeling. Yeah, I, I think you, that if you don't, if you feel too comfortable, it's a problem also. You know, yeah, that you should be on also. the edge and you f- should conquer this kind of uneasy feeling. Uneasy feeling. But that uneasy feeling, because it's been associated with a negative idea. It's been associated with, like, let's just say you had some, you had to pay some fine. Well, you had to pay some fine. You had to go there to the town hall and pay a fine. Yeah. Now you've associated the town hall with fine, court. This, that, everything's negative. But we always carry that fear that someone will come to us and say, oh, this is the guy, this is the guy. Remember I told you about this guy, and then two cops are picking you up, thank you. Well, a week later, they realize they've made a mistake, but you're traumatic, you were in jail. Everybody apologizes, but you're screwed for life. And how about about people who are are immigrants? You know, we had that during the the previous administration with Trump, that there was a lot of people who who got really afraid, even though they were illegal here, I hate to say that term legal. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, it's a, I, I, I don't like that term, but, um, you know. Not legally, here legally. It, what, be, be, that's a better version then. Whatever, whatever it is. Listen, when I arrived to this country, I arrived with a visa. So I, I always felt like I, uh, I, I, I always felt like I, uh, I, uh, that, that that I'm okay. I, that 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 that, 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 my, that me being my presence is justified by a document that I have in my pocket. Well, no, so I mean, this, you know, your, it's kinda... your presence should be justified by what you contribute to the community and what you contribute to those around you. I don't give a damn about a document. I really don't. Like as an American, I have I have I I the the amount of of care that I have about a piece of paper means absolutely nothing to me. What I really care about is people who, who contribute to a community. And our, and our immigrant population has contributed to our community a great deal more than a lot of our native, po- than our, our, our like born and raised, quote, American population. And, you know, it's like, okay, so you got to this country with a visa. That's an awesome thing. But the thing is, is that America and Israel have a different uh, standard. I agree. Come, 100%. It to this. It's uh, not across the board. I, I agree. And they're like, I, oh, okay, well, we're going to get this many people from here, this many people from here. And you know what, man? It's like I, I know more people from South America who had to escape what we would consider terrorism. Central South America, full-blown terrorism that we allow, and we allow it into such a way that it makes you suspect of saying, or do you condone it? Like as a, it, it, is, it is insane. What is happening across the border, the drug trade that's happening across the border between drugs and human trafficking, because of the fact that our country is set up the way it is right now, and we don't consider these people refugees, you know, and we only consider we don't consider them refugees for political purposes. Check this one out. A really good example of this is our uh, our state our, our status with Cuba. Okay, so. Because of the fact that we consider Cuba an adversary, an adversary, which, okay, there was t- there there was a Cuban Missile Crisis, but the Cuban Missile Crisis was provoked by certain actions. Yeah, it was oh, 60, 60, 70 years ago. It I mean, was, they, it was, they can't snap but, out but of top, it for God's sake. On top of out, out of that, on top of that, it was also the fact that we had missile bases in Turkey. We had missile bases over there that were close to the USSR. Yes, so the USSR yes. tried to rebalance its terms of engagement because that's what you are going to do. It's geopolitics, nuclear geopolitics. So, of course, they're going to go try to put mu- uh, missiles in Cuba. Of course they are. But a part of feeling but, safe in your own society would be on the account that you trust the administration to be responsible and smart enough to put in place rules of engagement so you won't end up with some criminal that found his way with a group of real justified group of people to come and ask for asylum, but he happens to be or they happen to be criminals or, or, or okay. insane, and they ended up you know, hurting you or a family member of you. Listen, and you say, I, well, you know, the level of naivete is really can cause a dangerous scenario that can hurt us as Americans. There's a lot, but the, the thing is, the idea of that criminal enterprise, that criminal element, happens as a byproduct of how we have our immigration law set up. Because if we had a better policy on letting people into this country, we would not, the criminal element, like for instance, think of it like bootlegging. 
What happened during the age of prohibition? Gangsters popped up. Why? Because you've created an artificial marketplace. The demand is still there. The demand for people to get into this country is still there. The demand for cheap labor is still here, right? Okay, prohibition was the same kind of thing. Demand for alcohol was still here. What happens? Well, mobsters don't care. They're like, we're going to go make this happen. And so what happens is you made the mob a very profitable market. And what we've done is through, uh, through our, the way we, we schedule drugs and we have our war on drugs, which hasn't done a damn thing, and the way we treat our immigrants, the people who want to come to this country to work, to live, we have given the cartel a very lucrative market. The market is get your drugs in here, see if you can also get people in here. Now you control the illegal routes in. Congratulations. Now you've got it. So good people who want to go through the system correctly are being punished on all sides. And that's just wrong. And what, what I'm feeling yeah. is this. Because like when you're talking about the criminal element, I think you are, when it comes to the criminal element, you're 100% right. We have to make sure that the criminal element is incarcerated. Make sure that that's taken care of and out of there. You know? That's 100%. But man... When it comes to everybody else, when you try to protect your people, you you cannot behave in a, in a holier than thou fashion. You you cannot be too naive, like me as 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 a member of the community. When 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 I walk around and I scan the immediate area, yeah, I don't say, "Oh, he is this, he is that." I just scan people. I can tell what I'd like to. And I teach my kids also, you know, yeah. be aware of your immediate vicinity. You got to. Don't just uh, take it for granted. I always tell my kids, "You see the window? See that road here?" Very local roads in Springs. Mm -hmm. You see the car that just went by? We don't know that if it's a guy that lives next door or he just drove all the way from San Francisco yeah. and he's here. So, you know, this is, this is a, a scenario where we need, I, I need to trust that my government is smart and still engages in a humane fashion and think of how to be hospitable and how to accept people into our country. Well, but before? you cannot just abandon your reasoning and abandon your smartness and, and be so naive, that so much so that it really jeopardizes the safety of your own uh, people. Yeah, but the question and is... And it is so, real. But when it's, have they been either smart... When has the fe On a federal level, when has that happened? You're talking about uh, an intelligent way to go about things. How many people crossed the borders, do you think, as, uh, since we started our conversation? It, uh, we don't even need to answer it. Uh, but, I don't know. Uh, but way too many. And how many of them, if you take 0.001% of them that are up to no good and they are, uh, um, yeah, this is the, the uh, just don't go. Yeah, Julia is one of the artists. That's going right, to right. there. Don't, don't go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, I'll call you back in about 10 minutes. Okay, great. Um, 0 0.01. You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm you know, sitting across you, you, the, the table from a guy who, was, who served in the Israeli military, correct? Yes. Okay. Israeli intelligence, I remember they went and they found a whole, they, they did a sting operation on the United States Secret Service. And that is to say? Well, it's interesting, right? Because if I were to monolith an entire nation of people by those standards at 001%, it wouldn't be, be right. And the that's system, what I'm asking. No, no, the point I'm trying to say is the system got to be compatible to identify them. So, okay, that means it doesn't have to be chaotic. You, ha you, can, you can officialize the whole so process. I agree with that. Officialize and the whole process. Let them come in. Let them do it slowly. Hey, don't rush. You're all, you're all going to get in. You're all gonna, we, we're going to allow you to come in. Yeah. Yeah, but, but we're gonna we, we're gonna we're gonna filter and we're gonna see. We we need the time to see. Oh, wait a second, this guy here. Wait, come, you come here, you know. And and you, you should be allowed to ask questions and to wonder about a certain very small number, but very dangerous elements that uh, that take out take this attitude of ours as a sign of weakness, and they take advantage of it. But there's a, unfortunately the easiest way to do that is across the board. Across the board, see who, who gives to your community, who contributes to your community, and then who takes from your community. Crime inherently will do what? It will be a detractor. It will take. And people who go and they work and they have a family, 
they add. Adding with your kids. I think a- America should go to Mexico with boats, with boats, and bring the people here that really oh, yeah. wishing to cross illegally, supposedly, with boats. Mm-hmm. And when they have the time and the technique to, to understand who is coming, come, we'll give you a ride. That's what I think is the best way to go about it. Give them a ride, man. Yep. And, 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 just, and then you, you cut all these people that are taking all their money and sometimes rape them and kill them yep. and never get them to their destination. You cut the middleman. You cut all these criminal elements. And then you also have a chance to say, you know, we just brought 50,000, out of which 550 were up to no good. They have no reason to come to our country. And so, yeah. You know, it, but the drama adds to the political aspect of it all. But the thing is, and this, the politicians like the drama, and they, they like do. to emphasize the because drama because they allow themselves at that point to to maintain control. Correct. Because the more problems that you have at people, the more people uh, politicians don't want, in my in my opinion, at the federal level. I've thought about this. If you're, a pol- if you're a career politician, why do you want to solve a problem? You got elected because of this problem. So because for you there's stay, more than one. For you, you know, to stay in power. So let's just, say, let's just say the immigration one, right? You get elected because you say, I'm tough on immigration. Well, if you solve the immigration problem... Now you have to reinvent your whole entire campaign. And maybe now... No, you can say, I managed maybe, to take care of it. And people will vote for you because you managed and no, succeeded they to... They'll say, they'll say some, other, some, other, some other crap. And you now won't have your expertise. See, if I keep a problem happening, I'm able to now stay in power. That's an easy way to stay in power. Especially on the federal level, because it's all theater. It's all people talking about things. And it's it's... The problem, that's the biggest problem that I have when it comes to the, this, this idea that we're going down is that it's just people going on and on and wanting to pretend like they fixed the problem without actually putting the work forward to fix it, to make things better for people. And so, no, that's... And just before you go, do you go yeah. around feeling that you carry a message by working here at LTV? Do I, do I think I carry? Yes, a message be, because that's the nature of the beast. I think say I say I say I'm a localist. When people ask me what my politics are, my politics are local. I think more power to more people solves a lot of problems. I trust your vote, and I trust people around you. I believe you. I believe you're going to make a good choice if you have to live with the consequences of your actions. And I think people who don't have to live with the consequences of their actions don't make good choices. So, so working at LTV widens your horizon, you think? Yeah, it, brought, it, 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 it sharpened me up a lot. I'd say it sharpened me up a lot mentally. Because before then, you start thinking about things and like, you, you get caught in the media cycle. So the media cycle will always lean towards a federal or a bigger thing because it's more drama. And now, you know, I look at things and I'm like, no, more power should go to local governments and more funding should go to local governments because that way your vote has more meaning, doesn't it? And eventually it changes the, the, uh, the national uh, picture, political you, picture. You can take Long Island. Just think about Long Island. It's just it's it's in it, Long Island's rather simple, really, when you look at it geographically, right? It's one island. It's 120 miles long. It has two forks at the end of it. It has a sound. It has a bit of an ocean. But overall, geographically, it should be a pretty simple idea. But in real, and and you you should say, oh well, I you know I'm representative or whatever for for this part of Long Island. There are distinct needs that I can name in at least a few different ta- a few different areas as you get further and closer to the city. The needs of the East End are unique. Both the Two Forks, Shelter Island, Montauk, all that. It's, it's unique. You go past pe- the area surrounding the Peconic, the needs change. Really, at Brookhaven, yeah. I would say that the yes. needs start to change. Yeah. And it becomes more of a suburban kind of area. We're more of a rural and tourist destination kind yes. of area. 
Those are two different needs, two different groups, and they have to be representative and dealt with accordingly because at that point the legislation, well, it, it doesn't really serve anyone. Yeah. Yes. You know? And so then you take that. Well, take from Brookhaven. Well, you go a little bit further. Well, at that point, you go a little bit further down. You really start to see the difference in the Stony Brook area. And really, it's, I would say, 110, 111. That becomes a road that divides. You know what I mean? So you have, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have this kind of these divider roads, you know, and they start changing how things go. Because then from there, really, you get into a, a larger suburban sprawl where you do have apartment buildings. You have a few other things. You have malls. You have a lot of this kind of vibe that's happening there up into Queens, Hofstra area. Yeah, the Hofstra yeah, area is yeah, yeah. effectively Queens. It's yes, effectively extension correct. of Queens. Definitely. You know, when you look at the planning, when you look at how it definitely. goes geographically. Exit 22 all the way to Midtown Tower. It's you have, it is it's, it's, the, it's literally the city embedded within the, the island. Exactly. So it's, it's a different story. But and there's you, a wonderful coordination that makes it actually work very well and understanding between all these communities well, that are... You know, on one little tiny island, but but so so uh, the diversity is incredible. But coordination is is a given. Well, the coordination is a given, but the re representation isn't. When you look at the districting, the representation is not a given. That's my but that's they're, my biggest problem. But they're voted by their local uh, population. Uh, when it comes to the districting, uh, yeah. the districting is is it, it, it's voted, but as far as the gerrymandering goes, it's a really rough thing of how they how they redistrict that. And then the other part is is counties. You know, there was a push okay, to okay. have a Peconic County. Yeah, yeah. Which was a smart idea. You know, it was a smart idea just because that way we can have better representation. You know, you want more and more localized representation the entire time. More power to more people. That's exact. That's how you fix. But we have problems. that as we speak, no? No, we don't have the Peconic County. We have the. Oh uh, no, no. Yeah. But I mean, the the idea of being uh, e equal and even enough by way of local population voting for whom they like and and getting what they want and so the one that no you have a greater you, concentrate you have a, a large concentration of federal funds the federal government gets to do whatever it wants to with these funds and it's very rarely held accountable for it but no for example in town hall you have the people that i i can live with i voted yeah. for them those are and, and so so, I would, so when want, the, I would want more power to smaller municipalities, yeah, I would I, want more in because I because they're an immediate government. It's not small government; it's immediate government because yeah. the problems are still rough. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're dealing with a hurricane, well, guess what? That's a huge problem. If you're dealing with a forest fire, that's a huge problem. I don't care if you're the president or the governor or whatever. That's a gigantic problem. Yeah, you want more power to be happening where it's immediate. Yes, and you want less money to be spent on the top because it's very easy to influence a small group of people at the top. It's very easy to But because to buy there's out. communication that's immediate between one supervisor to another, one entity to another, the help is more immediate and they don't have to wait for federal help. I mean, that comes a little later on. But that should be more. Like, for instance, if yeah. you want social programs, yeah. the, more, the, the more engaged you are with a social program, the more engaged you should be with the responsibility of that program and the oversight of that program. Yes. So that only makes sense to disperse it to local municipalities to have that, to have that spread out across. That, that's really it. That, I, I, I like the idea of a lot of, a, a lot of social programs. I like that, this idea that we should be doing more to help people who are here because of the fact that otherwise you do not get a sta a you do not get a stable society, and b you will not be a moral society. You will make a moral problem. You will make a moral choices, if not worse. That's the, that's the real truth of it, isn't it? Yes. You'll start to make worse and worse choices because you will get more and more accustomed to the idea of seeing your neighbor in pain, and that in and of itself is a problem. So you should have a greater responsibility to like, oh, okay, what's happening with this? Like the Community Housing Act is a great example of this, right? So we have this with a 0.5% tax that happens on uh, the sale of houses that are over a certain price point, and it's really good. It should be more. Yes. You should have more programs like that, more power. But, but look at it, pocket. only 5, 10 years ago it was less, and now it's more. 20 years ago as opposed to 15 years ago was less, now it's more. I don't know more. about that. It, because um, when it comes to representation, we don't get a lot of, the, we don't, we don't get a lot of it. We've the, had a lot of, we've had a large 
power push towards people who have a great deal of capital get better representation in Washington, more than you and I. And that's just a fact. We can see we can there there is data about that fact. I don't have it on me, but it it's a clear fact that if you are a person who has a great deal of means, then you can clearly afford a politician. Yeah. And what that means is is that that politician that you elected doesn't really work for you, does it? It means it works for their private interests. So now you must go work for those private interests if you wish to have anything. Just to conclude what we were saying, you know, if, if, if I find out that in my backyard there's someone who's bleeding and wounded and a stranger and looks disheveled, looks like he needs help or she needs help, uh, I, will, I will try to help. I will try to see if I can clean him up or, or give him some food. I will pick up the phone. I will call for help. Uh, I don't think I'm going to let him or her into my house. Um, I, I don't think that my passion and compassion and, and willingness to help and to do something good by others uh, should uh, uh, border with, with a responsibility on my behalf, especially if I have a family. So I take this story yeah. and scenario into the, into the national scene of us yeah. as a nation where we are so busy with so many important things. Mm -hmm. This is one of the important things that we cannot afford to fail with. And, and I have a feeling that we fail even even if it's miniaturically, mm -hmm. we fail, in, and even miniaturically is, is dangerous enough to, to derail the, the, uh, the um, uh, integrity of, of our way of life. Yeah, we gotta be, we got to be smart. It, it's not about – some people, if I say we got to be smart, they think I'm, I'm a racist because I'm trying to say – to suggest that we don't need them here or we, we, we don't need to allow them or we don't need to offer them what we can offer them because – and it also we should not feel bad because we are well-to-do country. We should not feel bad because we're maybe capitalism after all is working and giving a chance to an individual to prove him or herself. We should not apologize for these things. Well, I mean, and, and just because I don't help you as much as you think I should help you, it doesn't make me the villain. Well, I mean, it depends on your idea, right? I mean, that's a, that's a, slippery, that's a slippery idea. You know, what, when we say capitalism is working, what exactly do we mean? Because it's not because there's a because lot for me there's enough uh, a, a portion of socialism within capitalism in this country. That's why I can live with it. I mean, no, there's a, there's socialism for the rich. There's socialism for large corporations. Uh, no, that's no not for, socialism, not for the capitalism cannot survive without socialism embedded but within it. The problem it. is, is that well, talk to then explain to me why our tax structure over the past twenty years has done this trickle down economics lie. Because it's it, trickle down economics having that's a you know, legitimate question, you know, having, and, and, uh, having less and less taxes for those who make more only creates a concentration of capital, which is inherently stagnated, sta uh, inherent. And you know why it's still happening because we fail to address it properly as much as we fail to ad address properly the, the problem of Im immigration. No. And the, the immigration becomes a problem when it's not supposed to be a problem because we fail to address it properly. We fail to address it properly yeah. because we fail to elect the, our representatives who can address it. Or, be with, or, or, or because, God forbid, you're going to interpret my behavior as up to no good, and I don't want to be the one that would be considered up to no good. You know, people sometimes, uh, you know, when people relate to, to the Hello Hello show, some people come and tell me things that I don't know where, how they gather that. I mean, you have to be so mistaken, or maybe you don't even watch my show, you watch five minutes and you turn it off, in order to come to a conclusion, like you say, with the critics that made you feel in a way, yeah. whether you allowed them or not, doesn't matter. But it happened. You know, they yeah. threw their ball, they threw their crap on you, and they left. They did their thing. Yeah. Now you have to deal with it. And they forgot and it. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then you, you not always have the tools to, to deal with it properly. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is I don't want to be perceived. So at first I would try to correct them. And then I realized, what am I trying to correct? Yeah. This is a lost battle. It's not, they're trying to get me engaged with things that they're going to then leave me alone to deal with it. And I would feel like, what, why, why did I allow access? You know, it's funny. It's, I now have to live with it. And I know. I'm not the smartest and the strongest that I can just go like this and it's, it's, 
You know what I mean. Yeah, I don't have to hey, thank you. Know. And thank you for the crash course today. Oh, no problem. Thank hey. you, thank you. Right, yeah. Jason, the man, thank you. Always, man. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's how it is uh, when it comes to public access. And it comes to the Hello Hello show. That Jason can come in and we can have a half an hour worth of uh, discussion. Let me just check the time here. Forty-seven. That's good. So, uh, yeah, I. Uh, uh, let me just. Uh, uh, let me just do that. Okay, so, yes. Um, wonderful. So, uh, December, no, what am I saying is December? January 4th, year 2023, here with the Hello, Hello Show. And my name is Chaim Mizrahi. As I said earlier, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello, Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980 something. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84. About four decades of creativity and that level of creativity shows its results and its resolve and its strength uh, in, in, in a way uh, that, uh, um, that uh, make uh, a community happy and make a, um, <clears throat> and make a uh... yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's better. And creates uh, uh, the right amount of tension where we can feel uh, uh, very compatible with uh, uh, not only the demands but the opportunity that's given to us to create uh, uh, as we can and as we should and as we are entitled to. And um, well, that makes me happy because I've been engaged with LTV since 1987, something like this, yeah. And um, the result of it is uh, um, vivid and evident and strong and profound. And um, and it's just a joy to uh, realize that I'm part of this concept and, and contributing in my own way, one way or the other. So, um, as, as I was mentioning earlier, in, in, in the sense of finding a stage... Well, not finding a stage, realizing realizing that there is a stage that's available for you as an individual to uh, to utilize it, to uh, s step on it, to have it uh, available, and uh, and uh, and then that to realize that it's actually a contribution that uh, uh, that uh, runs deep and, and influences and affects uh, other people and so many people, especially of your community. Uh, okay. Okay, so I should just do this. Okay, that's better. Maybe I should do this. Mm, just bear with me. Okay, that's good. So, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to grab this here. Oh, actually, I have this here because I was... Uh, I did some... Uh, let's see. Now, let's see if I can get my friend here on now. Uh... 
Let's see if I can get my friend to on the air to continue the interesting conversation. <laughs> Gary Swanson is a regular here at the show, a wonderful actor, director, and uh, a wonderful creative individual that uh, just brings joy to, joy to my life as a friend and, and as a mentor and uh, all of that. So let's see if he's going to answer, if he is available. And... Uh, so yeah, I wanted to let's Thank see. Yeah, okay, so that's that. I guess that's that. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. That's good because I wanted to share with you. I wanted to share with you. Very good. Okay. And that's uh, the, um, well, I can't, uh, let me see, let me see if I can do this. Uh, that I, uh, uh, you know, the other day, was not too long ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, where I found myself... Uh, um, when something inspired me, something technical by nature really inspired me in a way where I found myself making a decision that I'm going to do a certain creative, artistic move on the behalf of that instant influence, inspiration. It was actually an incredible feeling that that I can make a decision that is instant and uh, um, surprising and uh, unanticipated and uh, sudden, uh, but yet in the same token, none of the above, uh, because it's just a part of who I am and because it's just who I am, period. And I have a lot of friends that I can identify that within them, how they react according to who they are and because they're representing and presenting who they are, what they are, what they stand for. They don't stall, they don't pause to think, to evaluate what is it that they're going to say, and if what they're going to say is accurate and it reflects them and who they are and what they stand for accurately. It just comes and pours out of them, and it speaks for who they are, and they trust that process. They trust that instinctive reaction. They, uh, they trust their instincts, obviously, and all that. So in, in that sense, it's just like a wonderful uh, outlet that you can find yourself actually, whoa, uh, I don't know, calling... Uh, for example, um, uh, okay, so here, this is number 34, where I am relating, uh, relating to number one. Number one was about eight days before number 34 was achieved. That means 37 entities came to life between the number one and number 34 within eight days. That's... You, you're talking about artistic attempts, and you're talking about the results, good or bad. Uh, that's uh, in the eye of uh, in the eye of the beholder, and uh, doesn't concern me at all. And uh, as we, I spoke with Jason earlier, we spoke about the fact that how some criticism from supposedly the wrong people can derail your uh, enthusiasm and make you feel. Uh, really wishy-washy about reality and about life and whatnot. So this is on second thought. The first one was genuine. You know, I'm talking about the uh, certain uh, the number one and the 33 in between. I knew you were a candidate and, and a suitable one at that. Uh, no corrections, only admiration, you know, like when something really hits you hard and you feel like, wow, this is special, I can do something with it, I'm going to do something with it, I'm already doing something with it and about it. No corrections needed, you know, you meet someone, you feel this certain way towards that someone, and you don't need to correct it or adjust anything, you just, it's just the way it is. No corrections, only admiration, instant admiration, of course. And you come closer to decipher for me, to decipher for me, my, my enthusiasm, I, I mean. And, and, and it stands in 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 my uh in the scenario of you know i think out loud uh, 
in, while you are there in, in full view, uh, appreciating the regard. And that's the thing that I stored. You know, you meet someone, you go through a certain instant feeling, and there's always a storage of information already accumulating within seconds. Uh, you know, I stored a fraction of, of the potential access, you know, potential access, of course, um, just in case if I were to need it, you know. And um, it, it was a smart choice. Uh, uh, even, even, you know, the downhill roll really uh, proved to be the most effective constructive pause because you know, sometimes you feel yourself going downhill really fast. It's actually a pause because you're in disbelief. You're saying, my God, uh, either I'm going to get hurt really badly or I'm just going to swing it and go uphill and flip and land safely and everybody will be happy. But you and I, we know, we know that's not the case for, for the most part. Um, and, and also a reminder from, uh, from a loving source, you know, so that stranger that you just met suddenly becomes a loving source. And that's a great feeling. The voice of the familiar, the, the sense of full respect. There is um, um, the real, you know, there's a new scent that's been introduced to you and you peel it like you peel a, uh, an orange and, and, it's, and you can't be mistaken of what it is that you're peeling. And that's the scent that rose and, and created that approach of getting closer, you know, the part of the imagination uh, it serves as a calming factor, if you know what I mean. The uphill climb. Uh, we all meet uh, enough to say that the uphill climb is, as we all meet, uh, enough to say it was uh, meant to be a precognition. Uh, and, and, you know, dwelling does not take part in the length of time. Uh, because that time was spent uh, adapting to the warmth and the feelings of being welcomed, you know, which is always a good thing and a good feeling. In a special way, uh, being whispered to be told of your trustfulness, if it's a word at all, uh, in a special way being whispered, I love already to love me because of you and you love too, even without understanding. And the feeling is that art and me are going to speak a lengthy, wide and robust art, a painting of all decades, a relation with all the dimensions coming together to parent us through her. And she was there to agree about that. Uh, to show love and, and music, singing, climbing to the most height the moment allowed, and like the moment allowed to take place as a partner, friend, neighbor, family, stranger, friend, acquaintance. And then it's like something like, like something like he, she, they, we, with all acceptance of the very essence, never to be argued and always to be the admiration which is rightful and complete, and it's only a sixth half full. So anyway, th this is like a, a, uh, a 36 out of uh, 117, and, uh, uh, and it will continue. Uh, Hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, again, so how I feel about all this in, in the sense of uh, being a part of the, uh, uh, of uh, the accumulation of that feeling that that builds up within me where I find myself uh, completely taken by the uh, opportunity and completely taken by, by the fact that we, how should I say, uh, uh, presented with uh, a possibility 
to bring to life certain things that are otherwise are very I don't know if I should say uh, um, mute or or, or um Or even uh, questionable in terms of what would be the results, you know, because there's certain feelings sometimes that goes along with the surprise. You know, you meet someone, you're going somewhere, you're uh, 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 encountered with a new feeling, uh, with a special feeling where it's just like uh, it gives you all this, the promised land within your immediate, you know, second chakra. And and you can't wait to create, and you can't wait to speak your piece, and you can't wait to add to this, and uh, to make it even more special than it than, than it can be, than it really is. So in that sense, um, I'm uh, up for the task. I keep on saying to myself, up for the task, and therefore, the results will bear, and will uh, introduce their nature and character, and it will be nothing less than admirable. In my eyes, even though I'm the one who's creating it, so I'm, I find it very easy to praise my work and, and my ability to bring to life these things that uh, otherwise are uh, very challenging, very demanding, very sometimes weird at some, uh, to a certain degree. And, uh, and uh, other than that, just continuing the same as I said, as we're starting and embarking on 2023, as we're sitting here in the early days of January 2023, and public access is alive and kicking and doing its thing, and 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 producers like me and like so many others that are just wonderful, they speak their pieces and speak their minds and speak their uh, aspirations and create and create and create and create and stop at nothing. And continue to create, and that's what we love, and that's what uh, presents uh, uh, LTV and public access in the in the proper light of uh, a level of importance. So more power to us, to you. We know you're out there supporting in your own unique way, and that doesn't go unnoticed. And we respect that, and we we uh, appreciate it. And we want to extend our love and appreciation and thanks to you, and want to wish you a happy new year to all of you out there with a wonderful, creative, uh, constructive year to come on all fronts. And always keep in mind that LTV is here for you exactly to accomplish these tasks of self-expression and of uh, all of the above in terms of uh, the wonderful things that we desire to create and desire to bring to life. And LTV helps us doing it. We're going to be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday and as much as we're here this morning, this afternoon, this day of January 4th, year 2023, here with the Hello, Hello Show, and my name is Chaim Mizrahi. Thank you very much. See you later. Steve Ram is here with us tomorrow.